is former Senate aide Tara Reid accused of sexual assault. Uh, the Washington Post and the New York Times have published multiple accounts of women who objected to the way President Biden touched them. Uh, should there be an independent investigation of allegations into the president as there was into Governor Cuomo? Well, first I would say um, the president has been clear and outspoken about the importance of women uh, being uh, respected and having their voices heard and being allowed to tell their stories and people treating them with respect. That has long been his policy, continues to be his policy. Uh, that, those were, that was heavily litigated during the campaign. Heavily, heavily litigated. Sure. Tara Reid is with us right now, author of Left Out, When the Truth Doesn't Fit In. Ms. Reid, how are you today? I'm fine. Thank you for having me. For those who don't know your story, and I, and I want to get to the media manipulation part here in a little bit, which is still going on, as you just heard, uh, as you know, obviously. Um, what, are, what are you accusing the then-Senator Joe Biden of, of doing exactly? When I was his staffer in 1983. But um, I have made um, you know, it clear that he sexually harassed me and sexually assaulted me um, when I was his staffer. Um, how did the media, when did you come out with this? Well, the first time I did not come out publicly, I came out in 1993 and I went through office protocol. Um, so I went to my supervisor and then I went to that person's supervisor and then finally to the chief of staff, Ted Kaufman, for assistance regarding the sexual harassment. Um, I was not given any help and then I went outside the office. Um, they didn't really have a setup like they do now and I filed um, a form, um, an intake form regarding sexual harassment. Um, it was after that um, and before um, that time I had been sexually assaulted. Um, through that process I wanted to come forward about the sexual assault um, but it was very daunting and um, I never heard back from the office to talk to someone one-on-one. -on -one. So, um, and then also I was threatened uh, by Biden staff um, to be silent. And it was very intimidating when I was in my 20s and I did stay silent for a long time until 2019. I came forward when the other seven women came forward and I saw Lucy Flores getting really torn apart by the press, similar um, to what's happened to me. And I came forward um, at that point, and then again in 2020 with a full account. Okay, um, and I wanna to get to the media portrayal in just a second. Is there any way that there was uh, the, the Cuomo excuse uh, of I'm Italian, I'm touchy, I'm and you know Joe Biden's like a weird, creepy guy, the way he touches people you see on camera. Is there any way it was friendliness? Well, sexual assault is about power and control. It's not about sex, right? And both, Cuomo and Joe Biden, in my opinion, are megalomaniacs. I mean, they they are alpha acting and a lot of it is about power and control and controlling the people in the room. Um, he put his hands on me quite a bit um, at meetings or whatever, but the point was about that, you know, power and control issue. So yeah, right. what I would say is that that is a ridiculous sort of rape apologist type of approach. Um, when you're entering someone's space, it needs to be mutually, you know, accepted. And um, grabbing and touching people without their consent is wrong. The first thing that pops up when I Google your name is a political article. And the headline is manipulative, deceitful, user. Tara right. Reid left a trail of aggrieved acquaintances. And you scroll down, you read this ridiculous article, and it talks about someone that you, you had an acquaintance with, with like some horses, saying she has a problem, I think she's a liar. And it's like, oh, jeez. So if any woman comes forward with any claim, then the media is gonna go back and find every acquaintance you've ever had and find people who are gonna say terrible things about you. That is horrible. Um, I think that it's not so much the media as the weaponization of the media. So what you saw with that article was a placement um, done by Anita Dunn, who owns Knickerbocker, which is a public relations firm, who was hired by Joe Biden's campaign. According to FEC, she was paid over $2.2 million. And her job was to make my story go away and to make Joe Biden look better, right? That's a PR's job. Unfortunately, she was also the finder, founder of Time's Up, which is a nonprofit that's supposed to protect women from sexual wow. harassment and sexual assault. 
when I went to them for help, they didn't disclose that Anita Dunn was already working for Joe Biden. And Anita Ryan Grimm. Dunn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's her story? So it's a senior advisor to the president. Correct. She was the head of the PR firm, Knickerbocker. During the campaign, she was paid to, she was one of the head people in his campaign to, to do the PR. So the Cuomo thing that broke that you saw with several um, resignations from Time's Up, they were caught colluding, Time's Up was colluding with Cuomo's staff to discredit Lindsey Boylan and the other survivors, similar to what was done with me. So what these powerful men are doing is using the media to attack regular citizens that are coming forward about mm. corruption. Yep. I, I got 30 seconds. I hate to do it to you. What, what about the women who go along with it, like the Anita Duns? It's one thing for powerful men, right? What about the women? They're complicit with rape. And it's wrong. And so we need to change the culture. We need to change all of it. I mean, you don't throw someone away to get access to power. They did it for money and power. And that's the worst reason ever. And the, uh, Tara Reid, the book is left out when the truth doesn't fit in. Wow, that was deep and insightful. I want more of that. Like, subscribe, get more.